In today's video, we're going to be talk talking about this very special topic, the Woodward FISA rule. And of course, this uh, is Woodward and this is also FISA. They were brilliant professors. All right, so let's talk about the Woodward FISA rule. What is Woodward FISA rule? The rule predicts the value of land and mass for a given structure by adding the contributions from various substituents to a base value. The base value for a given chromophore, which could be a dahin, a ketone, a diketone, and aldehyde and benzoyl groups. Um, so yes, each of these compounds have a particular value, base value for their chromophore. All right, so the chromophore is the group of is the group in the compound that is responsible for the absorption in the UV spectrophotometer. All right, so or in the UV region. So now this is just the value. Of course, I'm simply going to be giving you a short form of this formula for the different um, compounds so that you can easily rem uh, remember them while you are in your examination hall. All right, so here is the parent value or the base value but in this video i'm going to be um using parent value for the base value all right so let's talk about acyclic diene or heteroadenal diene so which is actually a transoid um diene like this so now when the uh double bomb the two alkenes the diene are not in the same ring so we call it heteroadenal diene all right so when they are both in the same ring, you call it homoanular diene, or when it's, a, it's in a, a cisoid um, form, like, like this, like this. Okay. So, now, for alpha-beta saturated ketone, if it's a six-member six ring, the uh, the parent value for that chromophore is going to be 215, and for a 5 member ring, it's 202 nanometers. So, for the substance like ring residue, we have um, 5 nanometers. It's going to have 5 nanometers, okay? So, the double bond extension is going to have 30 um, nanometers, and a cyclic double bond is going to have 5 nanometers. For an homohalonal diene component, is going to have hard 39 nanometers. Now for ketones, we're going to be talking about their ring residue, their substituents, other corruptors, uh, in terms of um, alpha, beta, gamma, and greater than de data um, so, um, residue, all right? So and these are the values we're going to be making use of in our calculations. Now let's talk about the first example here. We want to talk about the diene. So for the diene, we are going to be making use of this uh, formula, right? It's going to help us um, remember the word, word, word Fischer's rule, all right? So P is the parent value. The half is the ring residue. The H is the recyclic double bond. And uh, the D is the double bond extension, all right? So we are going to be talking about this in um, this video as we go go on. So because this formula, this short scouts, this mnemonic for the um, Woodward Fisher's rule under that, it's going to help you to remember every details that you need to uh, put into account while you are doing your calculations. All right. Now let's talk about the first one. Here is the parent value. The parent value for this one. So of course you know that um, this is an omohalula diene, and of course the base value or the parent value is gonna be two one um two five three nanometers. And also the let's talk about the ring residue. How many ring residue do we have? All right, so this is actually the chromophore. So these are the compound, the carbon involved in the chromophore, all right? So these are the ca uh, carbon involved in the chromophore. Okay. So now you can see this, this, and this, and um, this, 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 
are joined to the carbons that is bearing the chromophore, all right? So how many? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna be R6 ring residue, okay? And so that's gonna be each residue is um, giving us a contribution of five. So that's six times five, which is 30 nanometers. And so um, do we have an isocyclic double bond here? No. So you see this double bond is not isocyclic to this double bond because it's not touching this ring. Neither is this one touching this ring. Do we have double bond extension? No. You are going to understand that as you go on, as we write more examples. So this one is going to be a sum of 283. Now let's talk about this, all right? Now what is the parent value for this? Of course, we know that this is an um, heterohalonal dying. So the double bond, um, the dying are not in the same group, all right? Of course, we know that this is a carbon. So, all right, so the parent value is 215 nanometers. Now, what about the ring residue? Okay, so this is uh, the carbon responsible for the chromophore, right? So these are the carbon. So we have this joint to them. And so we have four ring residue. And that's gonna give us what? 20, 20 nanometers. All right, do we have an isocyclic double bond? Of course, if you look at this double bond, it's actually isocyclic to this ring. So it's isocyclic because this double bond can enter into this ring. So this double bond is actually touching um, this ring. And so it's isocyclic. And so that's going to add five nanometers. Okay, so we had everything together. That's going to give us two four zero nanometers. That's going to be the lambda max. Okay, so let's talk about this. Okay, so we could see this that this is also an heterohalonal diene. So the diene. So we we'll talk about this. We pick this. So. So this is an heterohalonal diene. So this is an extension. So after the chromophore, after the parent, the parent chromophore, this is a parent chromophore, a diene, an heterohalonal diene. So after picking this, you see, see a double bond that is conjugated to this. That's what we call double bond extension. All right. So parent heterohalonal uh, is giving us um, two. One five base value and um, base value. Okay, so do we have a ring residue? Okay, so this one is a ring residue. This is a ring residue. All right. So you also count the ring residue to the extension. Okay. So uh, you see one two three four five. So we have five ring um, residue, and that's going to give us a sum of twenty five nanometers. All right. So and what about exocyclic? Do you have an exocyclic double bond here? This, this is exocyclic to the right. This double bond can enter into this ring. This double bond is touching this ring. So this is ring A. This is ring B. This is ring C. This is ring D. So you see that this double bond is exocyclic to B. All right. And also, this double bond, of course, is not exocyclic to any ring. When you look at this exocyclic, I mean, this double bond is exocyclic to D, it's also exocyclic to B. And so we're going to be having three exocyclic double bond.
So that's going to be 15 nanometers. Okay. So do we have um, double bond extension? Of course, we have one double bond extension. So one double bond, double bond uh, extension. So, and that's going to give us 30 nanometers. So we had everything together. It's going to give us 285 nanometers. That is very straightforward. All right, let's talk about uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketones. So why do we solve questions on that? I'm going to be using this um, simple short formula to represent on uh, the um, Woodward Fisher's rule, right? So I'm going to be using this. So this one is the parent value. So these are the other subsystems and the other contributors. Okay, so now let's solve the first question here. Now, of course, we'll be talking about alpha, beta, and saturated ketone. And so that is the chromophore, right? So these are the carbons involved. So, so, so this is alpha and this is the beta, and you can see the unsaturation, okay, to the ketone. So that is the chromophore. This, this, uh, all these are extension, extension of conjugation. Okay, so the apparent value for six membered ring unsaturated, um, alpha beta unsaturated ketone is 215. So the parent value. All right. Now, the ring residue, as I told us earlier, we're going to be talking about them in terms of the alpha betas. So for the ketones, for the haldehyde, you're going to be talking about their ring residue in terms of the alpha beta and so on. So you don't just talk about the ring residue just like the way you talk about it in the diain. You're going to be talking about the ring residue in, in terms of the alpha position, all right? Now, of course, this is the ketone. So, of course, this is the alpha. There is no ring residue here. It is the beta. So, you see that here there is a ring residue. So, we're going to be having beta ring uh, residue. And that is going to be giving us, what, 12 nanometers. So, do we have at gamma, of course, this is... Gamma, this is theta, so these are greater than theta. So here you have a ring residue greater at a position that is greater than theta. So, and that is going to be giving us um, plus 18 nanometers. Okay, so. And also, do we have an isocyclic double bond? When you look at this one, you can see that it's isocyclic to this ring A. This is actually isocyclic to that ring, okay? So we have one isocyclic double bond, and that's gonna give you an know, addition of five nanometers. Okay, so then we have double bond extension. So the double bond extension, of course, after the parent chromophore, you can see that these and these are extension of conjugation. So we have two double bond extension. And that's going to hard to us, uh, go to hard a total of 60. And the last thing we're going to be talking about is the homohalan dying component. This is what you see here. So homo homohalan dying component. So and that's going to give us um, 39 nanometers. And so when you add everything together, that's going to give you 349 nanometers. Okay. So that's going to be the lambda max. All right. So looking at this question here, you can count towards this place. You can count. You can take this one as your parent chromophore. You can also take this one as your 
So, of course, if you take towards this place, you're not going to be having double bond extension. And so, therefore, but if you take towards this place, you're going to be having a double bond extension. And so, taking it towards, so if this one is A and this one is B, you see that this B is going to be giving us a higher uh, landmark. So, definitely, we go with B. All right. So, a parent value. Here is going to be 215 nanometers. Here is alpha. Here is beta. Here is um, gamma. Here is theta. So as, um, we have the beta ring residue. And that's going to have um, 12 nanometers. So, do we have as gamma no? So, at data, so we have a ring residue. So, and that's going to be 18 nanometers. So, now, exocyclic, we have exocyclic double bond here. So, you have exocyclic double bond. And that is one. So that's exactly all right. So that's the next thing to talk about. That's five nanometers. Now, do we have double bond extension? Of course, after this parent chromophore, this one is a double bond extension. So I believe you can remember the way I explained it earlier. So this alpha beta ketone. So this is what makes it alpha beta on saturated ketone. So this one is an extension of conjugation. So you had everything you better. That's gonna give you two hundred and eighty nanometers. I believe this is very interesting. Okay, so let's go to the last one on the alpha beta saturated ketones. So we have this. Okay, so um, of course so this is not even conjugated to this. So you can't take it towards this place because this double bond is not even conjugated to this uh, ketone functional group. So definitely this is what where we'll be taking it to, all right? So we'll be taking it this way, all right? So, but basically this is the parent chromophore, this alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So now, what's this member drink, parent value, is uh, 215 nanometers all right so the next thing we're talking about is ring residue we have at alpha this is alpha we also have at beta so alpha ring residue that is going to give us a value of um, 10 nanometers and when you look at beta, then we have a ring residue. So big beta ring residue. So that is going to give us um, 12 nanometers. And uh, so this one is gamma. This data this is greater than data. Here we have another ring residue. Alpha, beta, and greater than data. So, and of course, it's going to give us 18 nanometers. All right, so let's talk about exocyclic double bond. If you're talking about exocyclic double bond, you see this one is exocyclic to this bond. So this double bond is exocyclic to this ring. This can enter here, right? So, so this is exocyclic. Double bond. So we're going to be having 
when I nanometers. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to be talking about is double bond extension. So, of course, this is the parent common for this an extension, this an extension. So, we're going to be having two double bond extension, two double bond. Of course, you can shorten it as DBE. So, double bond extension. So, and that's going to be 16 nanometers since each double bond extension gives you 30. All right, so the next thing we're going to be talking about is the molecular dying component, which is this in the extended conjugation. So, this is an molecular dying component. So omoana dying component. So that's going to give us 39 nanometers. So therefore, the lambda max where you sum everything together is going to give you a total of 359. All right, now for the diketones. The first question here, now, when we look at this uh, ketone, it's not conjugated with any double bond. But when you look at these diketones, you see that it is conjugated with this. All right. So, therefore, we're going to take this one as the parent uh, chromophore. So, and this is going to be an extended conjugation. Okay. Now, so the parent value. So it's 215 nanometers. And uh, when you look at this, the alpha and the beta position, there is a ring residue there. So the beta ring residue is going to give us 12 nanometers. And here, this is the data. The data. Data ring residue. And that's going to give us 18 nanometers. Of course, for the diketones, too, we are still making use of this um, short form of the wood, wood visas um, rule. Okay, so we have talked about now do we have a cyclic double bond? Yeah, we have a cyclic double bond. And of course, you can see that it is one. So that's going to add five nanometers. Now we can see here is an extension of conjugation, so double bond extension, double bond extension. So that's going to have 30 nanometers. Okay, so do we have an one non component? No. So then the total is going to be 218 nanometers. Now let's talk about this. Here is an alpha diketones. So what is going to happen is that this is going to undergo inolization, okay? So there is presence of, of alpha hydrogen. So of course, this hydrogen. So you go to abstract this and this is going to come this way and this is going to come. And so you're going to be having So here is a double bond. So here is this. Here is OH. And here is the, this ketone. So the chromophore will be this, this, and this. All right. So that is the enone. All right. So of course, the parent value. Is going to be 215 nanometers. Now, here is alpha, here is beta. So, at beta position, we have this as ring residue, and here is an acute functional group. Okay, so an acute group. So, let's just put it together as beta ring residue. 
beta a methyl group so and this is going to be 12 nanometers this is going to be 12 nanometers and we have alpha oh and so that is going to give you 35 nanometers you um, had everything together so there's no exocyclic double bond there's no double bond extension there's no anodyne component and so the total is going to give you 274 nanometers all right okay so let's look at this um we know of course when you look at this skin we know it's actually symmetrical so you have to pick one of it okay so we can pick this as a parent chromophore so it means that this is a ring residue all right so now the parent value is actually that's 215 nanometers and here is alpha no ring residue here is the beta so we have this one as ring residue right so we're going to be talking about beta ring residue and so that's going to be an addition of 12 nanometers so when you sum up everything together, it will give you uh, 227 nanometers because there is no isocyclic double bond, there is no double bond extension, so there's no more than component. So, uh, yeah, so, but if this, let's say you have something like this, if, let's say something like this, Of course, you would have picked this one as you would have picked this one as chromophore due to the presence of this methyl group, which could have also um, given you more value. All right. Okay, alpha beta unsaturated how they hide. Okay, so of course this is alpha beta unsaturated how they hide. So we have parent value for this. Parent value, so that's going to give you 207 nanometers. So now here, alpha, this is beta, this is gamma, this is delta. All right, so at alpha, we have this ring residue. So at alpha, um, ring residue. So this is going to be. 10 nanometers and we have gamma and ring residue so and so this one is going to be 18 nanometers and uh, here is double bond extension we have double bond extension So, and that's going to be 13 nanometers. And we have one more dye component. So, one more dye component that's going to give us 39 nanometers. And so, by the time we sum up everything together, what do we have? So, we're going to be have 304 nanometers. It's just as simple as that. All right. Now let's talk about this. What do we have here? Current value, one high the high, is actually 207 nanometers. So the here is alpha, here is alpha, here is beta. So we have alpha ring residue. So that's going to be an addition of 10 nanometers. Here we have 
two beta. Okay, so here is beta ring residue. Here is alpha, here is beta. So we have this one, so which is gonna be so beta ring residue. So you sum up everything together. So that's gonna be two to nine nanometers. Yeah, before I end this class, I would like to share something very important with you. And that is the truth many people don't know or the people in the world, they don't know who is the creator of the heavens and the earth. And I want to tell you that Jesus is the creator of all things. In the Bible, from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. It was in the Word, and the Word was made by Him. And the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as he received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even them that believed on his name. So he came to Israel, so that because he's a descendant of Abraham, he came through Abraham, the promise of Abraham that through him shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So it was actually talking about salvation to all hearts through Jesus Christ. So he came to Israel. The Israel did not believe him. They didn't know him as their Lord and Savior. They didn't know he was the Messiah. So he came and he was crucified because he prophesied it himself that he was going to die on the cross so that everybody in the world will be saved. In the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 12 to 16, the Bible says, Given thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be particles of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So Jesus Christ, he created everything in the world. So you can see from these verses of the scriptures that Jesus is the creator of all things. He himself was God. I pray that you are going to understand and give your life to Jesus. You can invite Jesus into your heart right now because he ever lives and is even there with you. He will save your soul. Why don't you just pray, Lord Jesus, save my soul. I give my life to you today. I invite you into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Give me grace to follow you so that when this world comes to an end, how we have a place with you in your glorious kingdom. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. If you have given your life to Jesus, you will see my number, my WhatsApp number at the end of this video. Just let's chat so that you can know more about Christ and you can have eternal life. Thank you. All right. I'll be going to the end of this video and that is the bizarre derivatives. So here, the when you're talking about a benzoy, benzohyde um derivatives, you're gonna be talking about when C double bond O joins to or is bonded to to a benzene. All right, so something like this. So this is some um, benzene, and the benzene is joined to a C double bond O. And this one is X. So this how it, it denotes whether 
this uh, there is another substance that is auto to this meta to this or para to this of course when you're talking about auto para position to a benzene i mean to a group so if you, let's say this is x this is y this is w and this is z so you're going to say that um y is auto to this w is meta to this and z is para to this sorry for my uh, rough sketch all right so and that's what we're going to be dealing with so the this parent chromophore when this x is an a key or rig residue the parent value is going to be 246 and when this x is h you're going to be talking about parent value as 250 and when this h is oh or and um arcanoid group then you're going to be talking about 230 and so if this hour is in the auto position as so you have all these values and so we're going to be working with that as we go on to the other examples all right now let's look at the question number one of course when you look at this you will see that the x is what is an arcanoid so this uh, is an arcanoid group so when you look at this, you see that the parent value is actually in um, this, all right? Mm -hmm. So, so therefore, we're going to be having the parent value as well. Um, two thirty nanometers. Now, of course, if we look at this, this is the chromophore. Of course, you know that this is auto to this. So you're going to be talking about auto NH2. And so that is going to be adding 13 nanometers. You can look at the previous slide to get it. Now, we also have this. You can see that this is para to this. So this is meta. This is para. So we have para methoxy group para methoxy and that is um, adding 25 nanometers and so when you look at the sum of everything it's going to be 268 nanometers all right let's look at this you're talking about the parent value here of course you see that this x the hex here is actually a ring residue okay so you're going to be talking about the parent value the parent value is going to be 246 nanometers and um, you can see that this is auto today so you're going to be having auto um ring residue and that's going to be adding three nanometers and here is the meta is this is this is the chromophore, this is auto, this is meta, this is para. So para to this, okay? So, I'm sorry. Meta. So, and know it's gonna be adding a total of um, 20 nanometers. And so when you calculate the addition, it's going to give you lambda mass of 269 nanometers. Okay, so let's look at this, right? So this, this is the chromophore. So this is the chromophore to this benzene, okay? That is the chromophore. All right, so uh, you can see that this X, Kx here is going to be a ring residue. You can see it's a combination of a ring. So, and that's its parent value is going to be 246. So here is also to this, auto ring residue. And that's going to be three nanometers. And when you look at this here, 
this is ortho, this is meta, this is para. And so at this para position, you're going to be having a ring residue, para ring residue. And that's going to be hard in 10 nanometers. And so when you sum up everything, that's going to be 2, 5, 9 nanometers. All right. So let's look at this. What is the parent value here? Because when you look at this, you can see that the X here is H. And so the parent value is going to be give you to 15 nanometers. Okay, so here is the ortho. So we have ortho um, hydroxy group, and that is going to be hard in seven nanometers. Oh, sorry, not seven nanometers. And so we're going to be talking about para nano, para bromo and so that is going to be had 15 nanometers so we sum up everything together it's going to be 272 two. so that's 250 plus 7 plus 15 and 72 um, nanometers lambda max you can see this is very very simple so if you want me to make any video in any other aspect of chemistry just kindly write it in the subscription um, below um write it in the comment section below i mean and um, if you need an online um, tutorial you can send an email to this um email you can all you can also reach me on this um whatsapp number sorry sorry let me write it as plus two three four So this is my WhatsApp number, and we're going to fix you, fix you up for an online class. Thank you very much for watching this video to the end. I believe you've learned a lot. Kindly share this video with your friends. Subscribe. If you have not subscribed, we have a lot for you. God bless you.